Yes, mm. and we will definitely wait a couple of more minutes uh, for people to log in. Oh, Join the party. We can start. Yeah. It's like a lot of people joining. <laughs> Good. If, if five is a lot. <laughs> five. Okay. Yeah, we are already 20 and, and, and getting. Wow, it's cool. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe, I mean, you, you can definitely hear us. Just, just put a couple of comments in the chat, guys, where you're from, which city, which country, just to say hello that we see that you're alive. Yeah. I see people from Berlin, definitely. Uh, South Africa. Bel oh, Berlin. Berlin. Hey, cool. Uh, Hamburg, yeah. Uh, Dresden. Hello to Saxon. Cologne. From Mexico. Munich. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Dubai. That's We're cool. really international. Lisbon. Lisbon. Right. Copenhagen, of course. Yep, Serbia, good, South Africa. There's a few familiar faces or at least familiar names in the list already. So yeah, yeah, so good. good. Germany, hi Sasha. Yeah, we still keep a couple of minutes waiting until a couple of more people sign it. Yeah, we're yeah, 36 definitely. now. Definitely. So we're at the at, it, at, at what I mentioned, like the 30 percent mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost almost 40 yeah so it's good so good. the germans are here now come comes the others yeah yeah let's yeah. keep waiting May, maybe a minute more just yeah. to crack the 40 attendees right yeah we have to yeah and we we just get going so if, if you just join up and just say where you're coming from and maybe for those who have already said where you come from, what, what's your favorite drink? <laughs> Just to get a little bit fun stuff. And maybe mentioning your business, what, what is the business? Yeah, beer, love it. <laughs> uh, Nick, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Bavarian beer. Yeah, mine as well. <laughs> yeah, very good. Now look, we cracked 40. Oh, hey. Yeah, that's yeah, 40. Uh, very nice German beer. Yeah, I mean, German beers are nice. That's why I live in Germany. <laughs> yeah. Why you only see your own message? I have no idea. I guess we can all see yours, Julian. Julian, yeah. no worries. Hi, Hendrik. Julian, it's because you're writing to the panelists instead of to everyone. And probably that's an auto function that somebody set up without being aware of it. True. It's the first fuck up of the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, we will have more than this for sure. Let, let me change that. Now you can see it, maybe. I hope. I have no idea. So, yeah. sh shall we get going? I think there will be still people showing up. Uh, there you go. Yeah. See? You can see Four it. Five people. Um, that's great, actually. Seeing Joshua joining. Hey, <laughs> we just did a podcast today. It's good. Shall we get going? Let me Let's try to, to, to share my screen at least, if that works. Or oh, it fucks up again. No, that works. Good, it's maybe a bit big. Awesome. Um, can't see the chat, so it will be good to see the chat. No, it doesn't work like this. Hey, Mika. Yeah, that's better. Yes, great. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. It's it, it's the first kind of prototype of uh, the entrepreneurs fuck up night, and it's it's really cool that so many people are joining and looking into whatever comes up today. We have no idea how this will work out. Um, just maybe give you a little bit of background where where we come from, how we how we came up with that idea. So Jan and I made. Uh, met a couple of years back when we both lived in Russia and worked in Russia as experts. Um, and we kind of stay connected the whole time, uh, mainly focused on sport topics, but now as well more on business <laughs> topics. And I moved back to Germany last summer and, and we, we connected back and then we said, hey, let's do something together. And I have no idea how we exactly came up with the fuck up night, but it was one of the many topics we said we could be doing. And we just said, let's do a prototype and just announce it. 
and that's basically four four or six weeks ago and and here we are and basically starting the first fuck up night for us um it's it's, it's really cool that so many people are joining happy to to, to, to see so many people and, and uh, messages already. Maybe to give you a little bit of understanding who I am. Um, my name is Jens, Jens Heidland. I, um, I'm German, uh, grown up in Germany. Um, um, started my career when I was 16, working on construction sites and developed myself going forward to end up being a global head of innovation for one of the uh, let's say for one of the big Swedish furniture brands um, out there. Um, and and th all, all that just to start over, all over again and build my own businesses. And that's two years ago. So I'm now having five businesses with different topics, um, having a lot of fun and learning every day, doing prototyping. I'm a lot into innovation, as you can see from my t-shirt, um, helping companies to innovate in different ways, mainly focusing on the leadership of the companies like executive teams and so on a um, couple of other more fun stuff but that's not so much interesting for you guys today um, yeah that's basically um, everything from my side handing over to to Jean yeah thank you Jens and hi everyone welcome to our entrepreneurs fuck up night I am Jan uh, and I am a digital transformation enthusiast I'm about to establish my own company and also I work as a business development manager at Netology Software, is a vendor of low-code uh, business process management tool where we help uh, small and medium businesses to digitalize their business-specific processes. Exactly on the same topic, I host the Digital Mittelstand podcast. Uh, Mittelstand is a German word for small and medium businesses. And my aim is to help Mittelstand to overcome their uh, digital transformation challenges. Uh, I am from Turkey, uh, but I live in Berlin, which is almost Turkey anyways. Uh, but before moving to Berlin, I lived in Russia for four years where we uh, met with Jens. We have uh, quite a lot of things in common. Uh, we are both coming from uh, construction. I, I worked 10 years in constructions. And uh, besides all of that, I'm a triathlete racing in half Ironman distances. Uh, Jens is a triathlete as well. Uh, right now, I will uh, tell you a little bit about our agenda. So we, uh, our first speaker uh, will be Dan. And the topic of the, his uh, speech will be uh, taking the hits. And then uh, we will hand it over to Klaus. Uh, I just leave uh, the title of Klaus's speech to Klaus. Then we will ask uh, one of you guys to voluntarily tell your fuck up story. And if anyone is interested sharing their failure stories with us uh, today, please uh, reach us through the chat. And of course, as we, as we have two experienced entrepreneurs here, we will uh, run a quick uh, Q&A session. Before I hand it over to Dan, just wanted to say that uh, Dan's story is by default very interesting because he's coming from New Zealand. Yes, the other side of the world. And he established a very successful company in Munich Germany. So I am as excited as you. And right now, Dan, the stage is yours, mate. Thank you very much, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I hope I can tell some entertaining stories. So just quickly, before I go into the fuck ups, a couple of words about myself. So I'm from New Zealand originally. The reason the title of my story is Taking the Hits is back in New Zealand, I used to be a competitive kickboxer. And, you know, I couldn't help but draw the comparisons between my life as a kickboxer and my life as a uh, entrepreneur. Because frankly, it seems like every day I wake up, I'm just taking the hits all day long, you know? And uh, it's not about... Um, so much how many how hits how many hits you can take it's more about how many so how many hits you can give but more or less how many hits you can take that's largely related to the success as an entrepreneur so my first fuck up story basically starts actually well before I started my company it was started when I came over to the the UK in 2004 I left New Zealand I had uh, three degrees including a computer science degree and I came over and I joined a consultancy that was focused on testing and a friend of mine turned around to me and said 
Dan, if you start working in this uh, as, a, as a tester in, in this consultancy, you will always be a tester. And testing at this time was the forgotten child of IT. No one wanted to do testing because it sucked. You know, the tools weren't good enough. There was really a bad stigma associated with testing. And, you know, I was, you know, I took this, this the, the person that said this was one of my mentors and friends of mine, you know, and I took his words to heart. And frankly, he was right. Here I am 17 years later and I'm still in the testing industry, you know? And the message there was, um, it was not about making the right decision, but making the, the, the decision right, you know? So I took ownership of that one and I call that a kind of fuck up, but that started my whole story as it were. So we fast forward through some years. I also did some consulting throughout Europe and so forth. And then I had my first big project at a major automotive industry here in Munich. I'll let you guys figure that one out. It was a pretty cool project. It was uh, 2000, um, uh, sorry, there was around 200 people running Scrum of Scrums. And um, it was the largest agile project um, at the time. So the largest digital transformation project that was going on in Europe at the time. Super exciting to be part of, you know? They had 18 Scrum teams. It was, um, you know, it was a world of possibilities. So they brought me in. They asked me to do a, a modern agile testing concept. I thought, awesome, this gives me the opportunity to bring together the, automa uh, the automation, the, the, uh, the agile development, all of this kind of stuff. So I spent three months working my, my ass off to try and put together a concept and a handbook and all the stuff that they needed to, be, uh, to move forward with confidence. So in the middle of my presentation where I'm proudly talking about uh, automation and integration and you know slick modern software development techniques and so forth, they raised their hand and say, stop, Dan, we don't see the need for test automation in this project. I, I've never been in a situation where I've so totally missed the mark, right? This was clearly a need for that project, um, clearly a need on this project. Uh, there was no coherency. There was no underlining strategies. Um, and they tell me, no, just straight out, flat out, no. I mean, um, it was like there was a microphone, you know, there was a pin, you could have heard a pin drop in the room, you know? So, I left that room uh, completely devastated, but utterly convinced that I was right. So that was basically the inception moment for my company, Testify, which we ended up setting up later on. So fast forward a little bit, I came back to this large automotive company and uh, I met my business partner. We set up our company in 2017. In 2019, um, we, we, we went from going part-time as a side business to working full-time in Testify. So, up until that point, we were freelancing via our company, via Testify, and then we started working uh, full-time in 2019. So here comes, well, this is not really a fuck-up story. This is more or less just an observation. Um, and this is my second quote for the night. Wisdom largely comes from experience, and experience largely comes from a lack of wisdom. So as we were growing the company, we have these different phases of growth. And the first phase of the company is the founder founder phase, right? And that's where you've got the founders and everybody's working their ass off, you know? So in our case, there was just the two of us, right? So my partner and I. The second phase after the founder phase is the, the get whoever you can get phase. This is where you've got like, all of a sudden you're like, hmm, we can make a business out of this. Let's see what we can do. But we at least were bootstrapping and bootstrapping hard. And so we're like, okay, well, we've just got to take who we can get, right? And this is a bit of a luck of the draw, you know? And the next phase after the, the get whoever you can get phase is like, hmm, this is starting to get serious. It's now time to get some adults in the room phase. And, and then the phase after this is the, okay, now it's time to get serious. Let's start getting more professional. Now, the point that I'm trying to get to is that as we go through those different phases, the requirements on the team change and not everyone survives that transition. Now in the initial phases, you feel a lot of loyalty to the initial, um, uh, the early starters, you know, the people that you're working together with, right? Because there's a lot of um, blood, sweat and tears going on, you know? And sometimes actually, those people don't make that transition from the first phase to the next phase, you know? and so my big fuck up was um, as we transitioned from the, the first phase, the, the founder phase to the, to the more senior phases, I very nearly lost my, my founder, my partner, you know, because we had a miscommunication, the roles changed, but we weren't able to, to, to adapt the roles properly, 
and it was super hard. And through the, the whole, um, you know, we were in, um, we were moving the company forward and instead of focusing on growing the company, we're instead to have this, this friction and this conflict that's going on, you know. I said, that's not bad enough. We managed to get through that in the end. So but that's not the point. The point of the story is, is that this, this, as you're going through these different phases, you've got to be realistic about what's going on. One of the guys, our very first employee, as soon as we got some of the adults in the room, um, he had a big conflict clash, you know, and we had this culture clash. And actually, there was a, an incident that occurred, and, and it, it resulted in escalation, which I couldn't understand. And it had nothing to do with who was right or wrong and everything to do with this power and so forth. So that happened. And my, uh, my first employee basically stepped out of the room. You know, he, he left the company, but he stayed in the company for at least another three or four months, right? And if I look back in retrospect, he was in that company for four months too long. He caused a huge amount of friction. When he left, when he eventually left, he had access to my entire system. So we lost databases. We had abusive messages being sent through, you know. Basically, there was just a massive shitstorm. You know, it massively undermined the team development and we had to redo our entire infrastructure stack um, in, in ABS. Sorry, Jens, you have to give me a, a heads up when I'm running out of time, you know. It was super stressful to go through. And the message that I learned obviously there was that um, actually I knew that I should have got rid of this guy a long time ago, a long time before that, that escalation point. And I should have really taken it, um, taken action and got rid of him much earlier. And we had again had a similar situation relatively recently. And, you know, frankly, it was clear to me that I should have taken action earlier, but I didn't. And it still hurts to go through this. And every single time, you know, you're, you're reliving this pain and so forth. But in the end, it's obviously, it makes sense to do this earlier and to be uh, decisive and make sure that, it, um, that it's fair on both parties. All right, how much more time do I have, Jens? Just quickly, I've got maybe one more story. Yep, okay. So the next thing was then, as we started going full time, it was a long, hard winter, right? We had to do everything we could to get through, um, you know, to, to get the company up and running. So long hours, stress, pressure. We were dealing with an immature product. There was lots of massaging around corners. The first project that you get, you're always kind of grateful for. But in the end, you almost certainly become a low paid consultant, right? You're bending over backwards to meet the needs of the customer. And uh, this was very much the case, you know? So you have to learn how to set those boundaries. We had, um, we were working, you know, day and night for a protracted period. And then suddenly, from one day to the next, I lost all the hearing in my ear. You know, my left ear became deaf completely. And um, thankfully it came back, right? It was a middle ear infection, which is almost certainly psychosomatic, but I've never had that before. I never before understood how people could get burnout, right? And it was all about setting these boundaries, right? And the message there, of course, was that, you know, setting up a company and growing a company, which we now have 30 people in the company. So it's, I mean, it's successful to a degree. We're not really where we want to be. We've obviously got a lot of hard work to go, but it's a marathon and not a sprint, right? And you've got to make sure that you're reflecting on this as we go through. So this was definitely, let's say the message or the learnings that I've had from those, those brief fuck ups. So I think my time's up now, right, Jens? So I've now got to hand over to the mystery that is Klaus. So uh, with that, I will I will take from you. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, and we will we will take all your questions going forward. If you have questions to Dan, please put hashtag Dan before it. Um, you can already post them. We try to go back to them. Um, now we we will be moving to Klaus and Klaus and I met way back a um, couple of years back. Klaus and I worked together on an interesting project when I was still working in the corporation and. And we, we, we got to know each other in, in a nice way. And, and that's why I thought it's, uh, Klaus is an interesting personality, an interesting person to, to get into this uh, fuck up night as well. So um, please welcome Klaus. <laughs> so hello there. I'm Klaus. I'm the director of the College of Extraordinary Experiences. I work as a coach at McKinsey and Company. I'm one of the founders of the Global Institute for Thought Leadership and an author of 31 books. Now, right now, and I'm also telling you there's something about keynotes, I'm telling you all this shameless bragging for one single purpose. So you don't think I'm a complete idiot after you've heard the story. Maybe, if I'm lucky. 
Let's go back to 2007, when I was a little bit younger, a little bit thinner. And I'm not saying I was wiser then, but I don't think I'm that much wiser now. So it kind of evens out. I had a live action role play company. And what that looked like? Well, sometimes it looked like this. Other times, it looked like this. Now, there were a lot of swords involved, latex swords. Why that's important, we'll get back to that. So our story begins on a Tuesday evening. It's 9 o'clock in the evening. And for you Americans out there, this is 9 PM. I check my mail. This is before smartphones, that sort of thing. And, and this is where you had to actively check your mail. So I check my mail. There's a new mail from somebody. I don't recognize the sender. And it says, and I quote, hi, me and 80 kids are really looking forward to tomorrow. See you at nine. And that's not 9 p.m. That's 9 a.m. There's no phone number. Let's unpack that for a moment. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., 80 kids. That's it. So what do I do now? I write back. I say, see you tomorrow. And then I call Peter. I say, Peter, I want you to meet me at the airport at 6.30. I call Jakob and I say, Jakob, I want you to meet me at the storage at eight o'clock. And then I sleep. So we jump to the next day. The next day at 6.30, I meet Peter at the airport. Why the airport? Because at Copenhagen Airport, I'm Danish and I lived in Copenhagen at the time. At Copenhagen Airport, you could rent cars at 6.30. In the rest of the city, you have to rent them from eight o'clock and, and onwards. And I realized we couldn't make that. But at the airport, you could rent them at 630 if you pay an extra 40 euros or so to rent the car. I don't have a driver's license. And Peter and I, we meet up and we rent a car because I didn't own a car either. Then we went to the storage, which should say here. There we meet Jakob. And then we pack 80 swords. We pack 80 uniforms. We pack a few extra just in case. And we pack a minotaur something like this, a monster suit, something that looks nice and flashy for any sort of event. We don't really know what we're getting into, but a minotaur is always handy. Now we also pack a few random costumes. In this case, customers, but it just shows that spelling is not always my strong suit. It's now 8.30, then we drive. You might think, where do we drive from? This is where we are. This is a map of Copenhagen. We drive to a place a little bit Northwest of where we are. And you might think, why the hell do we drive there? You still don't know where you're going, right? You don't know where the customers, you don't know where those 80 kids are, which is correct. But here, there's a sweet spot between a couple of highways where there's a cross highway that runs. And if you are there, then you have the biggest action radius when you find out where you're going. So it's nine o'clock now. We're in position and we wait. Five minutes later, the phone rings. Hello, where are you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I think we took a wrong turn. Oh, was it at the Slango Force? Yes, I'm sure it was. Oh, can you give me the precise address just so we don't fuck it up again? Oh, yes, here it is. See you soon. It's 9.07. I call my sister. This is before smartphones. None of that stuff. Today, I would have just Google mapped it. Today, then not so much. So I call her. She's at home. She gives her or she gets the address from me. She reads me a route plan on the phone. I note it down. And I give it to our driver. It's now 10 minutes past nine. We get going. I call back the client and say, oh, we'll be there in 15 minutes. Sorry, sorry, very unprofessional. It's now 925 and we arrive because we've been in luck. This turns out this place was actually within striking distance of where we were. It could have been in the other end of the country. It could have been the precise opposite direction. Luck has had it that we've arrived at the right place or at least that we were in the right position roughly. They're adults and their kids, and the adults are annoyed. Of course they are. We're 25 minutes late. We can still save the day. Then we start rounding up the kids. We start dividing them into teams, and Peter looks panicked. He says, Klaus, there's more than 80 kids. I said, don't worry. He says, you can't just conjure up swords. We need swords for the kids. I said, exactly. He said, trust me. Trust me on this one. It's going to be fine. 
Peter's not happy. We divide the kids into four teams. Three of them get uniforms. Now we plan on giving all of them uniforms, right? This is what a uniform looks like. It's very simple. It's made of cloth and you can bundle it because it's simple. You can make it into a rough ball and tie it off. Now then we gather all the kids. Three of the teams are in uniform. One of them is the team without uniform. None of them have swords yet. And Peter's thinking, what's he gonna do now? So I show the crowd a crumpled ball. And I say, this, it's a magic ball of death. If you're hit by one, you're dead. Needless to say, if you're hit by one of the latex swords, you're dead as well. But we didn't have to go into that right then and there. So each team has only five magicians. Now, who wants to be a magician? Storm of hands go up, forest of hands even. And suddenly the 80 swords are enough. We hand out the costumes. We do the thing. The rest of the day passes without incident. The woman who hired us thanks us at the end of the day. And she says, I have to admit, I had some doubts when you showed up late, but we've had an amazing day. And this is the kicker. It's really nice to work with professionals. As we drive home, Peter is still in shock. And me, I promise myself never to tell that story. Thank you. Awesome, Klaus, thank you very much. There's no applause here in this. <laughs> so what, what, guys, what you're thinking, um, you can use the, the chat function and we can start um, shooting questions. We got a couple of questions already for Dan. If you have questions to Klaus, uh, please put hashtag Klaus in front and we can find it. Klaus, by the way, I love your jacket. I, I need one, one like that as well. That was the reason, by the way, that I had to go first, right? Because there's no way I could follow that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's shall we start with questions to Dan I have I have found one so Dan how, how did you go about increasing the maturity of the product yeah it was basically an MVP style approach right so lean product development we focused on iterating around our basic framework and um, whatever whatever the framework couldn't do we supplemented it with um, just basically um, massaging the tool forward, right? So, um, you know, consultancy services and so forth. And yeah, faking it until we made it, basically. So, yeah. And then an another one for Dan. How much time did it take for the ear to, to be back to normal? And how did, did you attend the meeting during yeah. that time? I took about a week off, which was the first time I'd taken a week off since we uh, started the company. And uh, it took about a week for the, the, the ear to get back to normal. But it was, um, it was purely a psychosomatic thing, right? So I'm happy to say it returned to normal eventually. So um, I'm just checking there's there are a couple of comments, but not 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 really questions. Any more questions to, uh, one to Dan? Dan? And yes, this large automotive company is yeah. in fact our customer, indeed. <laughs> and and you you can guess which company is it? We I think. Let's yeah. I think you guys are all smart enough to oh. figure that one out, right? No idea. Okay. <laughs> um. And let, let's move to Klaus. Um, we have. Only one as well, far I can find. Klaus, how do you get a green screen on Zoom? <laughs> but that's beautiful because that shows what actually matters today. I tell this yeah, painful about story to... <laughs> about being so unprofessional that I don't know what I've promised a client and I don't know what deals I've made and I haven't even entered an actual job in my calendar. And the important thing is my green screen. Well, I'll show you. So this trick is done because there's an actual green screen hanging there. I'm just gonna switch camera so we can get that done. And then yes, you can say some more stuff, but here, uh, where do we have it? Here's the thing I have, da -da. and here's a green screen. It's here and here's my camera, which is my phone filming it. And then I use some software called, mm -mm. it's actually called that. <laughs> And Klaus has a has a YouTube video where he goes into all details explaining that. Yeah. Uh, one more question to Klaus: uh, Where is the fuck up, Klaus? Well, the one as I just uh, I answered in the chat as well. And thanks for asking, Felix. I think not knowing what you've booked yourself out to when you're an entrepreneur, 
It's a pretty big fuck up. In this case, it managed to be saved by a combination of luck and daring and planning and playing the odds. But today, when somebody says, see you tomorrow, I will normally know what they're talking about. Then I had no clue. This wasn't just a lady who'd marched out 80 kids in the woods without telling me. This was me who had fucked up completely and hadn't entered a client agreement into, uh, into my calendar. That's not really the way to do it. It worked out. Luckily. There's another quote that springs to mind from Winston Churchill, which is success is mostly blindly running from failure to failure with an unending optimism and positive uh, enthusiasm. And um, I couldn't help but uh, also say, you know, I mean, this is this is the story of almost every entrepreneur that I know of. That's for sure. Uh, we all have that in common. Uh, one more question for Klaus. Uh, how is your LRP business going nowadays? Sorry, I don't know what is that, uh, but you got it. So if we're talking about bigger fuck ups, then that crashed and burned two years ago. I, I We had a company where I had 50 people when we were at our highest and uh, two big dreams and too little reality. And it crashed and burned and left me with almost a million euros of personal debt that I'm now working to uh, get rid of, or let's just say earn back so I can pay back people. So if you want the really big stuff, then I landed myself in almost a million euros of personal debt two years ago when that company crashed. Don't which you should, which you, if you are into entrepreneurship, you shouldn't do. No, no, don't do that. Do a limited liability company. Please do that. Yes, for my sake. definitely. So the lesson from today is go for a limited liability company. Uh, yes. So that's the okay. Because there is a tomorrow. <laughs> There's a, can we hear yeah. more about that fuck up? <laughs> Shit, we definitely can. But I think that's going to be a long, a long night. <laughs> we, we, we can do that in the next version. So be, maybe before we go into opening up the mic to, to, to the possibility, if any one of you guys want to share a fuck up story, um, please post in the comments. Um, and in, in, in case you like this format, uh, we have already chosen to do another one. So we have, we're planning to do another fuck up night uh, as another test in four weeks from now. So I just posted the Zoom link so you can sign up, early sign up um, for the next version of it. Any one of you interested in presenting yourself, uh, presenting your fucker? Nobody. Come on, guys. Maybe in the next one. If you're not entrepreneur, that's fine. You can share as well if you're not an entrepreneur. David, do you want do do you want to share your story? Or Felix, if you want to share, mm -hmm. share a fuck up that's not not completely fucked up yet. Well, this love want to do in a couple of years. Okay. <laughs> well, we will be hosting you in a couple of years when you have a, a fuck up story to tell. Definitely. While people are gathering their courage, I'll, I just want to share that the first time I did one of these fuck up nights was about 10 years ago. And I've since used it as a teaching tool in innovation especially to teach failed culture, for example, to police officers. So it's not only fun, it's also a useful training tool and teaching tool when you're wanting to change company culture. So thanks Definitely. for doing this, guys, and raising the awareness. So I think it's an interesting point, generally speaking, when you talk about failure, you know. So failure often has a negative association and sex with it obvious reasons, right? And especially um, in Germany, where there's this strong red line that everybody wants to see going through their, their profile, you know? Now, I'm not saying that Germany is the only country like that, but it's especially strong here in Germany, you know, this, this don't fail, this don't fuck up culture. But the reality is, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're making this shit up as we go, basically. You know, every day is like a challenge or a problem that you've never had before, right? And, you know, some of the things fall back to patterns that you feel familiar with. Um, most of the time, it's not the case, right? So you're just making this stuff up as you go. And sometimes it works. And sometimes you just learn, right? You know, and that's the attitude that you've got to take. So another quote that I really like is that um, when it comes to failure, failure is only a problem if you stop. Because if you stop, then your entire exercise up until that point is tainted by the end point, by the failure. But if you just keep on going, 
it's just another lesson, right? And you've learned something more and you try and avoid doing it the next time. But um, yeah. and this is then the Silicon Valley, you know, know the entrepreneurial mindset that's so characteristic of all these kind of uh you know the, the american style of doing things right where there's much more of a forgiving attitude towards failure but in the end most of the time if you make a fuck up it's 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 a cheap lesson because if you make it earlier then it becomes well hopefully before it becomes too expensive you know and the reality is klaus even though you lost a million euros and you're uh, you know personally liable liable for it the next time when you've got 10 million on the road you know it's it's 10 minutes on the line, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a different story, right? And uh, it's be a good book when I'm out of that debt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a big post from Julia. One of my fuck ups. Shall we read that? Or Julia, if you, do you want to tell us more about that? I'm not sure if she's able to present. She might have to. Uh, I can, the- I can bring her on if she is up to. Yeah, that at least what I at least allowed to talk is is shown up here. I can. Good. That would be great. Rock and roll. Let's try to find her. Okay, how does it work? It's an alphabetic order. If you can okay we have more julia's allowed to talk there she is yep hey, yes julia. hello <laughs> hello welcome great that you take the challenge yeah, thank you thank you julia yeah actually my fuck up is not entrepreneurship related but um i was once invited to a to an interview for an internship and uh, while i got the call that i was actually invited to the interview i was drunk because i was uh, living in cologne during that time and it was carnival season so like you're basically drinking the whole day and um yeah so i got the call and i was already drunk so i forgot that i actually had the call and i also forgot at what time the interview was supposed to take place so the next morning I woke up and I saw, oh shit, I got a call from Stuttgart, like who could have th- that been? And then I was thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute, I think I called with that company. And then I was looking into the emails that I received from them before. And I saw that um, it must have been that one woman that I was texting with before via email that uh, she was the one calling me. So I sent her an email again and I was asking her if she could confirm that interview one more time via email just so I would have it in my email uh, box as well. So it turned out okay for me. I actually got accepted to that to that internship eventually. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cl- close to uh, Klaus's story. Love it. Yeah. That's a great one. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Good Thank job. you very much. <laughs> Anyone else willing to share something? It's 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 not that hard. You, Julia, just make the jump. Anyone else? Come on, guys. Any more questions to Julia or to any one of the others? Let, let's do it. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, Joshua, do you want to jump on? Well, hey, yes. Okay, Joshua is, let me find Joshua. Sure, Joshua. And Nick said, we also had some early meetings while coming from a late night. Uh, I would assume that some alcohol consumption were there as well, if I may. Uh, so the new company new rule is no meetings before 10. Actually, it's a great uh, learning example. So you learn from your mistakes and you uh, adopt new rules to avoid those mistakes. So uh, thank you, Nick, for this uh, little uh, story. Let's move to Joshua. Hello, Joshua. Welcome. Hey, guys. Thanks for putting this together. It's a pleasure. Cool. What's your so- fuck up story? So I'm going to just uh, take a a slightly different stance on this and say there's a fuck up in this story by not doing something. And I'm going to use the example of where I resigned from my corporate job and decided to become an entrepreneur and talk about how sometimes in life when we think about risks and mistakes and things, we often think about the bad outcomes 
and we don't do that because we think about the bad outcomes, but we don't actually think about the possibilities that are associated with those things. And I think, Dan, it goes to something that you mentioned around figuring things out. And so that's my story in terms of how I was shit scared when I had to go to my manager and say to him, hey, Tristan, um, this isn't right for me. Uh, it's time for me to take a personal leap. And here I am today, an entrepreneur and things like that. So I just wanted to share that because I think sometimes when you think about risks and mistakes and things, we always think about the bad from it, but we don't actually think about the opportunities that can come from it. Yeah, I love that. I think that's an awesome point. And um, I'd just like to follow up by saying, um, you know, often when you get faced with this kind of decision, it seems like a huge step, right? To make the step to go away from uh, doing whatever you're doing, doing something that's safe and doing something that's risky with the uncertain future and so on and so forth. But, you know, my experience has always been, um, you know, when it's the right time to do this thing. And actually, in retrospect, the step is, is not as big a step as you might think it is, you know? It always seems like a big deal, but after you've made the step, you're like, well, actually, I was ready for this, you know? And um, this is, I think, a, a super important thing that, you know, it's it's really about this mindset and this belief that you can do it, right? And, and that makes, makes a huge difference. And Joshua, your point is exactly the case, right? And um, also, same thing for me, you know? It was a big deal. It took me um, 17 years after I started my career before I finally became an entrepreneur but in retrospect I was ready for this for years beforehand you know and it wasn't yeah. such a big deal to make that step yeah, yeah maybe I, just to, to build off that Dan is, is something just quickly from sort of the company that I was working for at the time was a, an asset or one of the arms of it was an asset manager and when you talk about asset management returns people look at upside and then they say how do you get that upside and when you approach risk, you often need to say, what is the risk in not taking a risk? Yeah. Because at the same time, if you don't take that risk, you'll never know. And sure. you may potentially never have that upside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I can just just fill in from my experience. I mean, I have been in, in, in the global management team for one of the biggest companies in Europe and 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 quit my job and start all over again, which is like everyone around me said, you're nuts. Uh, starting your own business and doing that but I think it's yes I've spent a lot of money I, I'm, I most probably have a lost of l lost a lot of money doing that but I, I have gained so much value for me for my family and for my friends which is 10 times worth it I money doesn't matter for me on this topic it's like the learnings you have as as long as you can live a, a, fa a fairly normal life I'm super happy um, there was another person Sunny wanted to talk. Let's find Sunny. Well, thank you, Joshua, for your yeah, story as well. True. And um, Joshua, just to follow up again as well, is that, you know, this opportunity, because sorry, I just have to follow up, right? I fucking <laughs> love what I'm doing, you know? My days are filled with stress and filled with anxiety, you know? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about the cash flow and, uh, you know, balancing the growth of the company with um, just all the other shit that's going on, right? And um, it's a lot of stress. And I translate a lot of that stress to the people around me, especially my wife and my family, you know. Um, it's hard work, right? And you've got to make boundaries and all that kind of stuff. Um, and maybe it's not for everyone, but fuck, I love what I'm doing, man. I will never <laughs> ever be not an entrepreneur because it's awesome being in control of your destiny, right? And having the opportunity to shape the game and, and change the game and, Re just redefine shit on a daily basis, you know, and I, I love it. I totally love it. Yeah, thank, thank you we... for these uh, sincere insights. And I think this is very inspiring for people who uh, are writing in the chat that they would like to start their um, companies or they are in the beginning phase of the startings or entrepreneurs to bees or newbies. So I think it's very inspiring. Even for me, it's inspiring as well. Uh, so thank you. Thank you uh, for that uh, sincere insight. So I think, Jens, we have one more uh, story. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Let's go. Hey, Hi. Sunny. So basically, I, I'm not an entrepreneur, but uh, I'm actually looking for a job. But uh, here's the thing about language here. So uh, for example, I, I'm from Hong Kong. And when I'm looking at the job description, I say, oh, English would be great. So I got past the first interview, all in English. And then the second one, and the third one, when I'm facing CEO and then president, he of course, comes to oh, the, wait, what, what? German, right, right now? And it's 
So I have no, I can speak German, but I have no preparation for that. So that's a big fucked up. And that makes me like, uh, I, I think someone met, messed up the description. So yeah, they didn't wrote that you have to do German on it. So that, that's how it works. <laughs> Welcome Thank in you. Germany. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, welcome to Bavaria. It's even worse in Bavaria because they don't even speak German, right? They speak Irish right? in Munich. Sorry, oh, they speak yeah. Irish, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I, I was just talking today with with a couple of young entrepreneurs and, and was saying, uh, explaining them how I selected people when I was working in the management position, and and they have been really freaked out that I even didn't look at CVs. Because I said, I don't care about the CV because everything is anyhow made up. Um, so uh, let's meet with the person and get to know the person. And by meeting the person, you will understand if they fit or if they don't fit. And I've never looked into CVs and, and, and spe specifically not education. But now being back in Germany since half year, after seven years being outside of Germany, it's quite funny when you talk with management teams in larger corporations, it's all about the CV. Like even me as an external, they ask me, so wh wh where did you study? What did you do? And I say, hey, that's 20 years ago. Who cares about wh where I study? Um, so it's, it's hilarious to, to, to see that. And, and sorry to hear it for, from you, Sonny, that, that that's you had fine. the situation as well. You're very, um, very, you're very right about the CV thing. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all make it up. Yeah. yeah, but if 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 you need any help with 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 a job, have, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy, happy oh, to support you. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And and, and yeah. Sunny, don't forget, Übung macht den Meister, so you can practice your German. <laughs> Natürlich, I learned German. Uh, war, war, is the ich language. war nicht vorbereitet, muss ich sagen. Also oh. plötzlich auf sehr Deutsch. Good, ne? Also, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Thanks, Sunny. Any and, anyone uh, else willing to share? Yes, I think Vladislav said uh, he's not ready to share it today, but in another future episode, he will. So Vladislav, that's your promise to us that you will attend all of our events and share your story one day. Okay? Yes. I am, I'll hold him to that promise. I've got a very close relationship with Vladislav, so I'll make sure he follows through on this. Okay. <laughs> that's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. Now I've got to tell another story about, well, my opinion on the whole red line through the CV is it's total bullshit as well. So, um, you know, the modern world is changing so much. You know, we look at the, 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 the job profiles that are, you know, the, the, the kind of skill sets that we need to succeed, you know. Um, most of the jobs or the interesting jobs didn't exist 10 years ago, right? Or 15 years ago, you know? So how can you possibly have a, a red line through your CV, you know? Um, I, was, um, well, I was involved in a startup and they were doing um, interviews and the guy insisted on asking um, how that person performed at high school maths. And I'm like, you know, how does that make any difference whatsoever, right? And, um, but he was convinced that this was the right way to go right back before you start layering on all of this bullshit and pretense and everything like this, but to really find the truth that this person was capable or not. And um, again, um, you know, the world, that the, 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 uh, the Volker word that we live in, you know, all of this kind of, uh, you can't, I mean, it gives you an indication of what's, what you can expect from somebody, but you can't predict the, the, the future performance based on these past anymore. It's just, it's a different story. Yeah, that's against the nature of entrepreneurship anyways. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's, it, it's more important that, that, you're, you, that you're capable and, and willing to think different and try different things rather than stick to the same thing your whole life. That has worked 20 years. And I mean, it's not bad doing that. I think there will be people out there who, who love that, like staying in the same role like, like forever. Like talking to my brother, he just have had his 25 years anniversary in his business and he's 42. It's, it's the first job he started and he's still in that job and he loves it. Doesn't work with me. No. Yeah. <laughs> Never, ever. I would be dying after two years. <laughs> Latest. So anyone willing to jump on or has more questions? If not, we will finish early. That's also fine. And I've earlier uh, a beer. <laughs> I've got a question for, not for us, but for all of our lovely listeners. 
why isn't the chat full of questions? Not so much for me, I'm kind of a weird guy, but for, for Jan and for Dan and for Jens, I mean, the cost of it is practically nothing. The worst thing that can happen is nobody notices the question or doesn't answer it or the answer is worth nothing. What's there to lose? So Max want to, to join. Max, if, if, you, if you raise your hand, then I can pick up quickly. So just to add to Brian's point then, when is there a point that you should throw the towel in, right? This is a deeply personal question, right? The question is not if you can throw a punch, but how you can take the punch, right? So the question is, what's your limit? And um, in some cases that limit might be low. Uh, in some cases that limit might be overstepped when you've got to, um, when you've got to uh, um, put some of your own cash or, you know, put your own liar. I mean, for a lot of people putting one million, having one million of liability for, for a step, that's probably a step too far for a lot of people, right? You know, the answer is it just depends on what's your tolerance for uncertainty, you know? And in the end, as long as you've got a North Star, as long as you can see clearly where you're going, and in my opinion, as long as you're making progress in that direction, and you can feel like there's positive progress in making and, and going forward, then it's, it's not the right point, right? But the point is, you know, I mean, maybe um, you run out of options. I, I don't know, the question is, you know, how do you, how do you handle the volatility, right? How do you adapt? And if you can't adapt, or if you're continually getting knocked back, then obviously there's a point that you should consider. But um, yeah, anyway, Max. Yes. Yours. Hey, do you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So um, yes, thanks for the for the opportunity to, to opportunity to share a story. And it wasn't a startup I built; it was just an idea. A few years ago, I was uh, with my girlfriend in the in the city, in, and we made some Christmas shopping. And the comp, uh, the um, the shopping uh, the shopping malls of everything was full, and everywhere were big long queues. And I had one thought. What wouldn't it be nice if you can buy if you can buy some or buy something only by taking it and maybe scanning it by yourself or get tracked and then you you can simply leave the the market without going to the um, to the cashier to pay and to wait all the time and I hope you understood the idea the ba the basic idea uh, so just going shopping without all that annoying stuff waiting and all so on. And then I went to my friends and, and told them this, this idea, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we can just go into the, into the supermarket, take something and just leave by using our smartphone, something to track or something like that. And everybody told me, no, why would you use that? Uh, it works uh, nowadays, it works everything pretty well. We don't need it and so on. And then I didn't thought that much about the idea. A few, a few years later, maybe you heard from that Amazon Go, started started and, and concept uh, right like that or saturn in germany i think also started something like that in the concept store and that was the moment where i realized so this is i this is this is, I, this is an idea i had some years before and uh, just because of everybody was uh, talking about this was saying that there is already a solution there we don't need a new one and simply because of that thought, I didn't start the idea and didn't start my own uh, business or something like that. And this is where I realized that the big, the hardest thing is maybe to start. And but that's also the most important thing: just simply start, and then uh, let's see what happens. Sure. Great one. And a great observation on this is that most of the time in your life, you don't regret the things that you do do so much as the things that you didn't do right yes and, yeah, exactly. you know, the first step is always the hardest right just to take that first step but um there's a one of my favorite authors is a guy called james clear and his thing is it's all about the habits right and it's about building a system that supports that so rome wasn't built in a day and all my guys will know this one rome wasn't built in a day but they were laying bricks every hour people always yeah. overestimate what's possible in the short term but they massively underestimate what's possible in the long term with a concerted effort, you know? So in the end, everything's possible, right? The ambition, whatever you want to do, it's all possible as long as you've got this concerted effort and you're taking this direction, right? And you're evolving and so on and moving forward. But it all starts with that first step, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's also a quote I'm telling now my friends when they, I, because I'm a person, I'm a, a 
coming up with a new idea almost every day or every week to my friends and um, they always say yeah there's there's a similar similar solution already existing and everything and uh, what I started to say is uh, the car was invented by Mercedes the production wasn't uh, uh, improved by Ford but I'm still driving a BMW at, at my favorite car just to show that there might be different um, oh, I hope I don't offend anyone with this example, but only showing that there might be some solutions before it, but they're maybe not the best or not the best suitable for for every person. Or there might be a uh, there might be persons who still need a similar solution but a different one. Yeah, that that's one hundred percent true. And and just out of my experience, I've been working with so many people around this topic, specifically on innovation. Because a lot, especially when you're in a big corporation, and I don't know too much about Germany because I'm so long out of Germany and I'm not working too much with German companies. Um, but I, I can 100% say that it, it's a lot not happening because you, you just think, ah, it's a nice idea and I don't do anything. Um, and that's the biggest mistake often. It's like get started, get yourself a little bit interested in that idea and figure it out. And then you can find easily ways of, uh, making it happen we're, we're, we're not necessarily even you making it happen it's just getting started and figuring out using forums like this you you can chat with with us every day but you don't do it we're there on linkedin we're 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 there on facebook or wherever you can just reach out reaching out to someone like us uh, who have done two or three or five or whatever business and fucked up um is always a great opportunity to to wash your idea rather than listening to everyone around you who is always saying no I have had that so much and so often everyone who knows you saying, yeah, you shouldn't do that because it's this. And I have had it this and that's too dangerous for you or whatever. Just stop listening and, and get together with people who are more yes sayers. That's, for example, why Silicon Valley is so successful. Um, because the whole community is always into this perspective. Hey, how can we take it to the next level? How can we learn from, from our failures? And I think that's depending which country you are and you're not used to that way of thinking. So I, I highly can, I can highly encourage every one of you reaching out to us, reaching out to, 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 to people like us who, who are, have done something or might have a stupid opinion at least, not necessarily that we always can help to, to, to if, you ha if you don't know what I'm talking now about, you should listen to Klaus' video, what he posted today on LinkedIn. He talked about, asking for help and that's a brilliant one for everyone to look and link like as well um yeah. i think that's a key point asking help um it's always a possibility yeah, and and i think it's a nice idea uh right now that i will uh, post all of uh each so each other's uh, linkedin profiles here in the chat so please feel free to connect and reach out to us but max thanks thank you for your story and there thanks. is one more thank question you. Before we wrap up, I think it might be wise to uh, ask uh, it to Klaus. And uh, Klaus, how do you build higher resilience? This is a question for Mary. Well, I mean, that's something that I, I can't give a good answer to in two minutes. But the, the simple version of that is that the way there's, a, there's an old documentary where Mike Tyson the former American heavyweight world champion uh, is training and you see him, he's hanging from these bars and he's bare chested and, and he's got an impressive upper body and his coach is throwing basketballs at him. He's just throwing basketballs at his chest and in his face. And when you look at it, you go like, oh, that's got to hurt. And, he, and he's asked like, but this seems like a completely mad way to train. And he says, well, I'm going to get into a ring. I'm going to get punched in the face by people who are almost as strong as I am. Notice the almost because it's Mike Tyson. And I'd rather have tried that beforehand. There's so many studies out there that show that one of the things you learn from trying pain, whether it's emotional pain, physical pain, economical pain, is you learn nuance. If you take kids, and I work with tens of thousands of kids, if you take a kid and punch it in the face, now don't, don't punch the kid in the face, but if you take it and, and somebody else punches in the face, one of the other kids, preferably, and you ask what is the level of pain you're feeling, 
Most kids will say on a one to 10 scale, 11, 11, I'm dying. But if you ask a kid that's done karate or boxing or live action role play with latex swords, they will say, oh, that was a four or a five or a six or a 6.5 because they're used to it and they are nuanced about it. So if you want to build resilience, go out there and do get a lot of small pain, punch yourself in the face, but only so much as you can take it. Don't do stupid stuff like I do. Just do a little bit of stuff. Go out there and feel how it is to do things that hurt a little bit. And then when you're better, then they hurt a little bit more. You don't climb Mount Everest the first day, but you need to start walking up some hills if you're gonna climb Mount Everest. Just don't do, just don't do it all, all at once. That's all I ask. Yeah, but uh, point. I asked this question to you because you are the only one who can summarize a perfect story in two minutes uh, and a perfect <laughs> answer to that question. Uh, maybe you. before be, before we close now so everyone who is on a on a phone or on a laptop doesn't matter take a screenshot and share it on social media that you attended the fuck up night number one because you you're one of the few people who ever joined the first fuck up night uh we organized and and i hope you all sign up for the next one and finding them if you're interested in speaking your story telling us your story uh, next time please Please, please, please contact us. Then we bring bring you up as a as a panel participant. Uh, connect with us, of course, like Klaus was just typing. Um, and and happy if if you join us next time. We try to find another uh, group of interesting people to show up and speak, uh, uh, tell us their fuck ups, and try to to prototype it going forward. Any any last departing words, Klaus and 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 Dan. I mean, it was a great experience. I really enjoy it. You know, it's fun telling stories and it's fun seeing, you know, how things resonate with people, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, the advice is just get out there and do it, right? Just start taking those steps, step out of that comfort zone, into that growth zone, you know? Try and find ways to maximize the upside and, and minimize the downside, you know? Another quote from Mike Tyson, just to finish on, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face, right? So it's one of my favorite quotes, of course. And um yeah, I mean, um, life is a roller coaster, right? You're never really 100% sure about what you're doing as an entrepreneur, at least, you know, in life in general, right? But um, you'll never know what you're capable of unless you start taking that step, those steps. So I can only encourage you all to give it a go and uh, try and find ways to minimize the downside and maximize the upside, right? But get after it. I'm yeah. going to end on a slightly different note. And that is, I became an entrepreneur at age 23. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have mentors to begin with. I have that now. That's one thing I regret bitterly because they would probably have said, Klaus, don't be such an idiot. Be half the idiot you are. That's fine. <laughs> but most of all, then I thought that asking people for help, I thought that they were too busy. But what I've learned since then, especially since I've become one of those people who sometimes get asked, is that nobody loves talking about anything but themselves if they can help it. If you write to Ken or to, or to Jan or to Daniel or to anyone and say, hey, what you do is interesting. I'd love to hear how you've done it. Oh, I get an excuse to talk about myself. Bring it on, random stranger. Most of us are like that. Sure, Bill Gates isn't like that, but anyone who's like one level below that and further down will gladly spend their time talking about how they've done a thing if you even just pretend to listen. There's so much wisdom out there. You just need to tap it. And I wish I'd known that way sooner. And I'm glad I know that now. Good point. Good. John, and, and any departing words from, from you? Yes. Um, thank you all. First of all, uh, thank you to uh, our speakers, to uh, Klaus and Dan. Also, uh, thank you to all of our participants. Uh, it was great having this first experience with you. It was just an idea. I think I sent a voice message uh, in the middle of the night to Jens. Right now, we did it. And it won't be the last one. That's my promise to you. And yeah. uh, as the closing words, thanks to Jens that uh, being such a good uh, partner in this event. And... I am looking forward to uh, seeing you, talking to you in the next uh, event. And thank you once more. Yes, S same from my side. We will be posting the video in, in, on our YouTube channels. Um, and and you, you will find it on social media if you follow us so somewhere. So just follow us, you will find it. And you will as well see what's going on going forward. So 
with that, thank you very much for everyone joining joining the call. Have a great evening or morning, depending where you are. Um, and see you next time. Thank you very much. See Thanks, you guys. guys. See you later.